Hi, I'm Tim Harrison. I'm the Managing Director of Ionic Rare Earths. We're developing magnet recycling here in Belfast with Ionic Technologies. Uh, we're developing the Makutu Rare Earth Project in Uganda, producing mixed rare earth carbonate there from our demonstration plant and now looking at uh, exploring downstream opportunities in Brazil. You are indeed. We're going to we're gonna hear all about the kind of moving parts. There's a lot going on, Tim. Um, but first of all, um, the raise, 5.5 million placement, um, a little bit more expensive than you'd hoped, presumably, because of uh, what the markets are doing at the moment. Yeah, challenging market at the moment. I think uh, rare earths is not feeling a lot of love. Um, certainly prices are, you know, substantially down from, from where they were um, 12 months, even two years ago. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty challenging market at the moment, but, uh, yeah, we keep just pushing on and, um, and ticking boxes and, and making progress. Well, I guess the point is you raise the money. That's, that's, the, that's the positive here in this. And I guess I'm intrigued today because there's so many moving bits to this. I want to know where I should be looking more importantly, where are you going to be allocating that capital? So why the raise? Why now? Yeah, look, I think uh, where we are, we, we needed to put some some more fuel in the tank uh, given where we want to take uh, the business, but specifically the momentum we've got with Ionic Technologies. Um, so I'm back here in Belfast now. Um, we continue to meet with groups. We're, we're showing people through, um, advancing the discussions now to towards commercial partnerships. Um the development of what we're doing here in Belfast, you know, commercialising the tech, you know, looking at the site, uh, progressing the feasibility study, um, and now looking at, you know, where that plant two, plant three, et cetera, is going to go in, in other markets. Um, so, yeah, there's a bit going on, Matt. There is, there's a lot going on, but it, it, it seems to be working. And look, um, there's lots of companies busy being busy, but um, Belfast seems to be really kind of moving through the phases. Uh, government support, and I you know, read in your press release that you know you're full for the next eighteen months as well. So that's not too bad. Yeah, look, uh, we continue to have engagement with the supply chain. So um, obviously, we've got a, a very good relationship with Less Common Metals, um, um, our collaboration partner here on a on a UK supply chain. But you know, engagement with the magnet manufacturers, um, engagement with other industrials that are evaluating moving into into rare earths and, and looking at recycling as a great way to, to, to penetrate that market and build a footprint. Um, so we, we're bringing those groups through. We're showing them the process plant, uh, the demonstration plant, um, and starting to talk about what those opportunities are going to look like. Okay. But explain to me, though, scale, scale, scale. There's a demo plant, so obviously early days. Um, if they like what they see... How does this move forward? Where does plant you know two, three, four, five go? How does it get funded? What's the model? Remind me. Yeah, so we're looking at leveraging the work that we've done here in the IP in the joint ventures. So um, working with uh, companies with balance sheets to be able to finance the development of these next plants. Um, where are we looking? Well, we're looking in those markets that are wanting to develop uh, magnet rare earth capacity external to China. So you know, Europe, the US uh, and other parts of Asia are key markets where we're, we're looking to grow, uh, but also Brazil, uh, where we see a huge opportunity and we, where we've been engaging there with the Brazilian government for, for the best part of two years. Okay. And, and what, what's the potential for Belfast? You know, what will it just be a demo uh, plant to, you know, try and get um, partners on board or, or can it do more? Yeah. So where we are now, the capacity at Belfast, we're evaluating what we can do to de-bottleneck it. Um, certainly there's a, there's more material available to us than than probably what we expected uh, certainly 12 months ago. So we're evaluating what we can do to add more capacity now. But, you know, with regards to the commercial plant that we're working on the feasibility study here in Belfast, you know, we're engaging with local stakeholders. We've identified a site. And so we're working through the, um, the approvals process for, for that site um, and that, that'll be the basis for the feasibility study and looking at capacity, looking at how big we build this um, to provide certainly a solution for, for the UK, but also increasingly providing more material into the European market. Right. And, and obviously, look, okay, the market's slightly, slightly depressed, but at the same time, there is a huge machine at work here in terms of the recycling uh, industry across Europe, you know, in terms of government mandates, subsidies, etc., all those sorts of incentives that you you want to see. 
with with that in mind, is this will this expansion potential need to be self funding, or do you think that um, there's going to be you know financing available? You know, once you decide what you can do. Look, once we've uh, finalised the feasibility study, um, you know, and we're working on this package now and, and exploring what's available to us through through channels here from stakeholders in the UK government uh, and different. Uh, funding mechanisms and pools of capital that have been established within the UK for, you know, um, the energy transition, um, you know, providing the critical raw materials um, for electri- electrification of automotive. You've got levelling up policy um, and regional growth. And so we're in a perfect opportunity and, and location here in Belfast to, to capitalise on that with a, a you know substantially lower capital requirement to, to actually deliver magnet rare earths to the UK. So, um, yeah, we, we, we've had a number of meetings actually today here in, in Belfast um, with de- different stakeholders within the UK government, uh, different departments, so that we start to map out what's available and, and uh, yeah, set a path towards the financing of a commercial plant here in Belfast. Right. And what reassurances have you had um, with regards to demand? Because we've seen, you know, some of the other battery metals um, out there talking about OEMs perhaps revising their their growth targets. Um, Is that a concern for you? Um, And where does that sit within the kind of magnet recycling, um, you know, uh, remit that that you're seeing out there? Yeah, no, look, I, I think um, whatever we produce will be gobbled up, um, certainly by the UK and, and European um, customers. Um, I mean, we had a discussion earlier today. They'll take everything we can produce. Um, they'll even take the material that we're producing in the demo plant because there's an immediate need now. So, you know, the, the demand's there for the product. The demand's there for recycled materials because the supply chain and the OEMs are asking for that material. They're asking for that to come into their existing capacity and existing production now. Um, and we're the only people out there, we're the only company out there producing separated magnet rare earth oxides that, that can be used to make the, the you know, the sintered magnets, the grain boundary diffusion um, techniques that, that minimise the amount of heavy rare earths to go into uh, the, the magnets for, for offshore wind and um, uh, electric vehicles, for example plus military and defence. So I, I don't think we're going to have any challenge selling the material that will be generated from, from the plant we build here in Belfast. Right. So the industry's there, demand, demand is there. I guess the question is always going to come back to, well, what price are you going to be able to get? Because, you know, rare earths tend to be slightly erratic in behaviour, certainly have been, but the the general consensus is that moving, moving forward, perhaps things may be a little bit, a little bit less erratic. Well, that's the hope anyway for 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 you. So, when you're going about doing your your studies, how are you how are you viewing that? How, how how do you manage your own expectations around forecast price? Well, I mean, we we subscribe and have subscribed to a number of different um, forecasting uh, groups for for a number of years. Um, you know, for for all the rhetoric around you know the pricing where it is now, you know, the forecast really haven't changed. Uh, because the demand is still projected to be substantially more than the supply. So, and given the, the, the level of engagement that we've had from the market, you know, we're inundated by requests from multiple groups now looking for access to both the NDPR, but more importantly, it's the heavy rare earths that everybody's trying to work out where they're going to get it from. Um, so that provides us with a unique opportunity to try and get the best deal we can um, and ascribing to pricing that will be, you know, longer term contracts, um, more so than, than trading on spot. Right. Talk, talk to me about the government, right? Because it's just typically, look, you work in a complicated sector, a very opaque sector, um, you know, and, you know, government involvement is, tends to be some from, you know, 30,000 feet. They're not really into the detail. What are they, interested in helping you do what are they what do they understand about the need for ex china rare earths and access to that i would say certainly the discussions that we we had today um with the uk government are really around security of supply and helping the uk with sovereign capability so you know the the projected um rollout of 
uh, electric vehicle motors in the UK um, is certainly going to justify a substantial amount of magnet rare earth production in the UK. So you know, the engagement we're having with government, they're looking for security of supply to underwrite the advanced manufacturing that they want to build um, here in the UK and continue to um, have, you know, best part of, I think it's 900,000 um, uh, current employees in the UK uh, automotive sector. Um, and you know, the UK is one of the largest manufacturers of internal combustion engines at the moment. And they're looking at pivoting to, you know, being a, a major producer of electric motors into the future. That's going to require magnets. Um, and so, you know, I think we've got a, a very supportive government who's looking at security of the materials that they need to go into the advanced manufacturing industries that they want here in the UK. Um, and, you know, we're, we're perfectly placed to be a, a key enabler for, for that uh, capacity here in the UK. Right. And are they enabling you to kind of go, go through the phases and, you know, get what you want? Because ultimately, you know, they're unlikely to kind of cough up any, any money, but there might be incentives there and partnerships to be had. So in terms of what are, what are they actually doing from you apart from learning about this? Yeah, so I mean, if we if we look at the track record and the support that we've had from the UK government over the course of the last uh, eighteen months, you know, we've had the best part of you know three and a half million pounds sterling worth of of, of support to develop a, a demonstration plant, to complete a feasibility study, and to um, to look at you know the the development of a domestic rare earth supply chain here through partnerships with with less common metals and Ford. I would say that uh, it won't stop there. There are other things that we're, we're working on now. There are other opportunities that we're exploring right now with support of the UK government. Um, we are in discussions about what uh, access to capital uh, and support may be available through funds that have been established in the UK to support advanced manufacturing, regional growth um, and levelling up. And so I think we're, we're in a perfect position to take advantage of that with a very supportive government that wants advanced manufacturing developed here in Belfast in Northern Ireland um, and wants to, you know, have the the, the jobs and the, the security of this, you know, strategic raw materials for not just advanced manufacturing, but also from a from a defense perspective. Okay. And you, and just be really clear, and you make money how? With, the, with, with Belfast, how, how do you make money? So we'll make money on the sale of rare earth oxides uh, into the, the supply chains that we're working on developing right now here in the UK. So um, as far as the, you know, the, the models in which we're operating, we're looking at you know, tolling arrangements whereby we'll take material and turn that back into or extract the rare earth oxides to, to put it back into the supply chain um, of our partners now. We're looking at aggregating end-of-life magnets and materials so that we can unlock the, the magnet rare earths within that material and put that back into the supply chain. Um, so I don't think we're going to have any problems certainly selling product and making profit into a demand that is going to clearly um, outstrip supply. Eventually or like out of the gate? I mean, how, how long, what's the kind of ramp up for this? Is there a big enough market in the UK day one? You know, would you have to look to Europe to... Yeah, so we're looking at being in production in, in 2026, Matt. So um, certainly the dialogue that we've been having with, with stakeholders here, you know, completion of the feasibility study, which we're aiming to have done certainly in the next few months, having that done by the middle of the year, positioning this um, with a clear articulated ask to the UK government on, on what it is that we can deliver to the UK government through the development of magnet recycling here in the UK. Um, and then in production in 2026, and that material going into the supply chain um, in order to provide and develop the magnets for advanced manufacturing here in the UK also align with 2026. So, uh, yeah. You got a sense of the size of the market yet? I mean, it's fairly nice since so it's a bit hard, but what do you know? Well, I mean, if if we look at just, for example, the, the, the relationship that we've and the collaboration we've announced with Less Common Metals and, and Ford, Ford have identified and announced that they want to build capacity for 420,000 E-drives being constructed at Halewood in the UK. If we look at the production requirements, uh, you know, to produce 400,000 EVs, 
uh, sorry, 400,000 electric motors. It's going to require 200 tonnes of magnet rare earth production. Um, and I think publicly we've sort of gone out and said that that's probably where we're looking at the, the initial capacity. But we are revising that given the, um, the, the increased demand um, for that material, uh, certainly and our experience with the demonstration plant. I would say that there is more material out there for recycling than um, than we probably uh, previously expected as well. Okay, okay, interesting. Let, let's jump, let's just jump down to Uganda, um, Makuti. Um, what's happening on the ground there? How is it? How are things advancing? Yeah, so we're making mixed rare earth carbonate. We are um, again producing a large inventory of material um, so that we can then send that off to a number of groups that we're in discussions with um, on offtake. So. Um, offtake negotiations are progressing and that's also part of the strategic partnering process. Um, so, you know, we've demonstrated the ability to make mixed rare earth carbonate. We're aggregating more product to be able to send that off to, to partners. And um, we're also waiting for, for a few other things and a few other dominoes to fall in the supply chain to be able to talk more publicly about some of the progresses that we're making with Makutu. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's bubbling away nice, nicely in the background. Um, okay, Brian, um, I guess we'll, we'll hear more from you as and when there's news. Um, obviously, if people are getting to test that, they concentrate. That's that's got to that's got to be good news for you guys. Um, again, I think we'll be looking to try and understand how those economics kind of flow down through the company. Now, um, you've something exciting. I think what I think uh, potentially exciting is obviously this um, JD with Erdis, um Mining and, and Minerals. Um, tell us exactly what this deal constitutes and what you know what you get out of it, what you're expected to do. Yeah, so um, the joint venture we've announced with Veritas um, is looking to establish both refining and recycling capacity in Brazil. So Ionic is a 5%, less than 5% shareholder in Veritas. Um, so we, you know, we, we know quite a bit about the deposit itself. Um, we, we certainly watch the news and we're expecting um, that they will have a significant resource that has the potential to be a substantial feed source for, for new refining capacity um, that, that could be developed in, in Brazil. And, and we want exposure to that opportunity and that, that landscape. I, I think um, Brazil has all of the, the potential hallmarks of being um, certainly a, a very attractive destination for refining given the cost base um, and certainly looking at the access to feed material for, for refining. So, you know, having done enough work around understanding the economics of refining and locations and, and where we think we can, we can deliver the most um, economic and robust refinery, you know, we do think that, that Brazil presents a, a, a very, very good opportunity to develop a, a much larger ecosystem for rare earths. Um, and and I think we want to be part of the the landscape that's emerging there. So we've uh, we've got this joint venture now with Veritas, and um, you know I think it's very exciting for the company. Um, right, but, but but tell me tell me more about the de- the deal. At the, you, you, you're talking um, about um, you know re- refining recycling facility in, in Brazil, but it, w- what what's the actual nature of the contract? I mean, do you are you Buying this off of them is it an offtake. Is, yep, is it, how, do you, how do you make the money? Look, that, that, or just selling technology. No, no, no. So at the moment there is no um, there is no binding offtake. So we're we're looking and exploring what that looks like. I think through this relationship, both Veritas has the ability to certainly commit offtake or can now commit offtake with separated um, rare earth oxide. So. I think there is an, is there's an uplift, a substantial uplift for for, for Veritas, um, for ourselves. There is a, a footprint here for us to explore and build a footprint um, in Brazil, um, and be part of that landscape, which which could involve certainly the company looking at other primary deposits to to build out capacity, and have control and access over the the production of magnet rare earth oxides to help develop a, 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 an ecosystem in Brazil. So. You know the opportunity now to explore, you know, greater value addition in Brazil, um, and working with a, a number of groups that we've been in dialogue there on on recycling opportunities for the for the last couple of years. Also, okay, 
Veritas, not Veritas. Okay, Veritas. Yeah, potato, 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 potato. Um, okay, so they are. It's a stepping stone into the Brazil ecosystem again. Big, big car manufacturing ecosystem. Um, and wind turbines and electric motors. And wind turbines and electric motors. So yeah, Absolutely. I mean, and, and this, is, this is the landscape that that we've we've sort of been mapping out for some time. Um, you know, again, being here in Belfast, we we did host a visit last Friday from um, from the Brazilian government, um, and so they they've been actively engaging us for some time. Now is the right time for us to be able to move forward. We've got a lot of confidence in what we've done here in Belfast. We can replicate that in in Brazil. You know, we we're certainly aware of capacity. We're com- aware of customers. We're we're aware of a huge opportunity there, and I think there is a supportive government. Um, that is looking at how they can access more value out of their 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 rare earth endowment, um, and I think through recycling we have an opportunity to certainly be part of that that ecosystem to start that material moving, um, and then being able to then bring on primary supply through refined oxides as we grow that base. And how, how are you viewing the market? Because you you've seen obviously you know price movements, you've seen equity issues. Across the board, um, you know, you you look at the markets and go, well, maybe some business models get valued differently, different multiples, etc. There's a kind of technology component to what you do, or industrial component to what you you do, um, which is very different in terms of multiples for miners or, or explorers, etc. So, are you trying to kind of create some product lines which which perhaps give you some of that upside? I mean, how, how do you, how do you be playing the rare earth space? X China. Look, I think producing product and then being able to market that product into value addition, into metal alloys, magnets. You know, you start to play in a, in a very different space, and um, and I think that affords us the ability to um, also develop a lot more IP and um, you know the relationships with the supply chain to create more value. Um, we're not simply just going to dig dirt and sell dirt. We're selling technology metals and um, being able to take that material into value-added industry and advanced manufacturing obviously creates the opportunity for the company to be at the forefront of you know, a significant uplift in value. And then beyond that, with what's happening, um, you know, the ability to produce a, a wide array of, of, of rare earth elements and being able to take those products forward into advanced manufacturing and be part of a a new landscape on on supply X China does present an opportunity for the company to, um, I think, extract more value from from just the, the the mining assets themselves. Okay, so capturing more of the value downstream, great. I'm um, Brett Lynch, uh, new executive chairman. He's been he's obviously came on in this round. He sort of, I think, was he a couple of million bucks into this thing. He he believes in what you're doing, um, but at the same time, he's going to want you to be kind of good good managers of the the capital and make sure they're getting best return on that on that money um so brazil how much actual capital are you allocating to that or is it a time skill basis this is its time and skill right because right. Okay. um at the moment i mean we've done a lot of the work to be able to 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 work out what the costs are going to look like what the flow sheet configurations are going to look like you know what will it cost for us to build capacity in brazil um so by the end of this year, we, we're aiming to complete a scoping study on a refinery and a recycling facility. You know, a lot of that work's already been done. So it's really just working out, well, where do we think, um, through discussions with the supply chain there in Brazil, where are we best placed to put refining and recycling? Um, and, and that can be done, you know, without a huge amount of capital investment uh, from the company or, or the joint venture. I think, you know, going back to, to, to your point there about Brett coming on board, you know, Brett's been a tremendous support um, and extremely keen on pushing really hard for, for ionic technologies. And I think, you know, he sees an opportunity with this because it's unique. Um, we're doing something that, that nobody else is doing. And, you know, there is a demand there from Western governments to build this capability in their in their backyard. Um, so hence why we're, we're, we're really putting a lot of effort into ionic technologies to push this thing uh, along and now moving towards those commercial partnerships. I, th- I think, you know, and investors are going, well, well done on the raise. It obviously says that, you know, people are interested in this. Obviously, me being slightly disappointed in, you know, the you know what it, the price it was raised at, but 
given the market, you know, take the money when you can, I think. Um, what would you say to those investors about what you're going to be able to do with this money and, you know, why they need to give you the time to execute on, you know, like what is, you know, there's a lot of moving parts here, right? And a lot of conversations going on and, and it all seems positive, but is the market going to come back to us? Is Aurora going to come back anytime soon? Um, do you just need some some deals, some partners on board? What's going to make the difference? Yeah, look, I, I think all of the above, Matt. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're, we've been very close on a few things and, and I think over the course of now, the demonstration plan up and going, bringing people through, bringing companies through, the feasibility study, the quality of the product, you know, we're very close now, I think, on, on being able to move Ionic Technologies forward and, and expanding the global footprint of Ionic Tech. Um, I think with Makutu, we've got product, there's demand. You know, we do satisfy that that near-term production of heavy rare earths, which is what, you know, the Western supply chain is, is looking for. Um, and I suppose, you know, with that money in the bank now, yeah, we've we've got a, a few months to, um, to really kick some goals on the back of these catalysts and position us uh, to, um, you know, take the company forward and put it in in a position to um, to be able to capitalize on the last four years of work that's gone into uh, into the assets. Yeah, like I, I, I'm not I'm not dismissing the amount of effort that's gone in and the conversations, etc. But it's kind of going to move from catalyst to contracts, or you know, you know, catalysts through to you know partners with some kind of financial upside and and being able to explain that. Do you, do you feel that you're close or you know or is there how much more do you need to deliver to kind of allow those people to make decisions oh look matt i've felt that we've we've been close for a while i think um you know we we've done a lot of work and a lot of engagement with with a number of groups and um you know to take things forward we we've we've, we've sort of now brought them through they're very very keen on the opportunity and now it's really about trying to now Get these things signed and agreed, so that we can we can move and, and move forward with those partnerships. And is there a kind of set pricing regime in the, in the market? Who who sets the price? You as the seller, or do the buyers de- define that? I mean, supply demand. You know, it's 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 usually common sense, but in rare earths, it kind of feels like some in area. I'd, it feels unusual. So, what can you tell us? Yeah, look, about? I mean, discussions uh, at the moment are around. Um, there are pricing. Um, options out there, uh, which I, I'm not sure are overly transparent, and uh, and actually act in a you know in an elastic supply demand environment. Um, so we're trying to get away from those uh, those mechanisms. So things like uh, floor pricing and uh, obviously cap pricing and those sort of things for a portion of production. Um, certainly helps to secure the, the the financing requirements for the for the projects to be able to take and be taken forward. Um, so that's part of the the dialogue. Um, but we're also having to explore ways in which we can be quite transparent across the supply chain, because the OEMs are, are looking for transparency and um, a, across all of that 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 advanced or all across all of that um, value addition process. So. It's, you know, what's the mine price? What's the refined price? The cost to go to metal, the cost to go to magnets. Um, and, and being able to, to provide that transparency and clarity to the OEM so that they understand the, the true cost of production. Um, so there's a lot of engagement. There's a lot of dialogue with, with a number of groups that we're talking with now. Um, we are engaging with some groups that have had a mandate from from their senior management to to go and explore um, new supply chains and being able to procure a portion of their existing um, their existing supply through these new non Chinese supply chains, um, they're prepared to pay a little bit more. Um, but if we can get to a competitive pricing structure, then there is no constraint on how much they'll buy. Okay, so what am I looking for next from you? Next time I see you, what are we talking about? Well. Depends on how quickly we see each other again, Matt. Um, but by the time we, we next catch up, we should have our feasibility study completed for uh, for the facility here in Belfast. 
Um, and and with that, you know, we should be able to start to talk about the the upside on what we can do here through Ionic Technologies and uh, and what we can deliver to um, to certain stakeholders here in UK. Um, the ability to provide material into into Europe as well, and um, you know, hopefully on the back of that, we'll also be in a position to start to talk about some of the the um, the other markets that we're looking to to quickly roll this technology out. With Makutu, look, I'd love to be in a position to start talking publicly about about some some offtake, um, and and there is a bit of dynamic um, stuff happening in the background. Um, whether or not that's done in the near term, or you know, in three months, you know, that's that's requiring a, a few other dominoes to fall. So hopefully that's you know we've been quite patient there, and and hopefully that's uh, that's pretty close as well. Um, and then with regards to Brazil, I think we'll be talking about the size of the opportunity in Brazil, um, and and just how we've positioned the company to uh, to to be a um, an early mover in that landscape that's going to emerge. Tim, appreciate the update. Uh, good luck in Belfast. Um, say hello to the folks there. Thanks, Matt.